Hello and welcome to my channel on the hood crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's been on the hook. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for uh, coming back. I'm excited that you are here with us and thank you for all of my previous subscribers, the people who keep coming back, the current subscribers I should say, they keep coming back and watching my show. Thank you so so very much. I try to I have most of my content about crochet and wearables. I do throw in a few things every now and then that aren't that, but mostly I talk about wearable crochet. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about diamond painting as well. That is a new craft that I've picked up. I really love it. I've done several diamond paintings, as you know if you've been following me, and I show you the progress that I'm making on my paintings every so often, and mostly now every Monday. I try to put a little bit of video in my video that shows you what I'm up to in my diamond painting craft. Now, I will tell you this, I have a role that I'm going to talk about. Um, I will play that B-roll, what they call it a B-roll, it's just a separate video that we drop into our video about diamond painting and I'll play that for you in just a few minutes. Right now, I wanted to tell you that my diamond painting is coming along very nicely and I'm working on a brand new one. However, I am ordering a very, very special diamond painting that will be like my most advanced diamond painting, my most difficult, I'd say the most challenging maybe, uh, as far as not, it's not really the size, although it's a very large diamond painting. It's not as big as the one I did before, which is this one or this one. I don't know which side I'm on, but uh, I'll drop a picture of that in and show you the size of it compared to me. I stood next to it. I wanted to show it to you. And also, uh, this one is not quite that big, but I will drop in a picture of that as well. It's called Angel Playing a Flageolet, a Flageolet, and I'll put that right along the bottom here so you can see how that's spelled. That is an old-timey flute. It's like a medieval period flute. I'll have to tell you later who the artist is that painted this. It's so beautiful, and I saw it on a website called Heaven and Earth Designs, and if you're a cross-stitcher, which I know a lot of y'all are, you know that that's the epitome of cross-stitching projects. Projects. Those are beautiful, beautiful uh, cross-stitch projects and they have lots and lots of colors. And this particular one I'm looking at, they have converted some of their cross-stitch to diamond painting and I was so excited to see that. And I looked into it and I realized that this particular painting has 90 colors, 9-0, 90 colors, and more than I've ever really had to deal with before, but that's okay, I can do it but it has 90 colors and it's also not a kit. They sell the canvas and they roll it up really nicely and send it to you in a, in a round container and all that, but you can ask for it in black and white or you can ask for it in color and I asked for it in color and I asked for it with um, the poured glue, which I really prefer because you can move the diamonds around a little bit easier with that. And since it's a square diamond only, I thought that might be helpful for me. And later in the video, as you see, that the last piece that I'm working on is a poured glue canvas and it's in square drills. So that's a little bit different from round. And I just, I don't mean to go on about diamond painting, but I wanted to tell you where I was. And I'll put a picture of the angel playing the flageolet right here. It's a beautiful, beautiful painting. And I, uh, I have to love whatever I'm painting. I have to love it because I spend a lot of time staring at it. I have a lot of time staring at it and I, I want to love it or I don't want to do it. So anything that I've bought that I didn't really love, I haven't, I haven't diamond painted it because I have to, uh, really enjoy the work every single day. And I try to work on my diamond painting every night for about an hour or two, sometimes three hours. If I have plenty and plenty of time and I'm, my back isn't tired, I will uh, diamond paint for a few hours, but mostly it's an hour or two. And that way I can finish a painting. It, it comes along very nicely and it takes many nights, but I do keep my time on the hours tracker. And y'all asked me about that last time as well. The hours tracker, and I'll put the name of it right along the bottom here. That is a free app on my iPhone. I don't know about Android, but it's a free app. 
And you can keep several jobs on there. Jobs is like a project, maybe like a diamond painting or a crochet project or something like that. And you want to keep your time to find out how long it takes you to make a certain project. You can enter it there. It's very easy to use. And if you want to put in more than three jobs, I think it is, you have to uh, pay $2.99 one time, uh, $2.99 one time. I thought that was a bargain. So I went ahead and did that. I up upgraded to the permanent hours tracker and that way I have probably nine or ten uh, projects on there now and I can see how many hours that I use to make each one of those so I'm really enjoying it all you have to do is remember to turn it on and turn it off and I have uh, become very familiar with that and it's a the habit that I had to keep so that's a little bit about my diamond painting I'll play that diamond painting video a little bit later in the show as you know on Saturday I released a new pattern and this is the Rebecca sweater I'm actually wearing it today it's made from knit picks swish DK which was hand dyed by my friend Becky therefore I named this sweater the Rebecca sweater it's a top-down sweater with a little bit of um, excitement here not a whole lot is pretty easy to do the increases are easy to do as well and it is not sized so this sweater you can make it as large or small as you want to um, I made it probably between a small and a medium I'm guessing maybe a medium and a large just whatever size I needed with my measurements so I uh, created it and then I, I give you the formula that you use in order to measure yourself to be sure you're making the yoke large enough and then we add the body to it and you're basically done. And you can add some sleeves to it if you want. I added a few, I think I added a couple of rows and then some ribbing to this one. I didn't really do a whole lot um, to it after I finished the body. So I wanted Crystal to to model my newest Rebecca sweater. The crystal sweater is made with the Vitalana Loftus or Lofty DK, Lofty DK. And this is the color Daffodil, not loving it, but I do love the softness of it. It's very, very soft. So let me show you how much I've finished and Crystal's modeling this because it wasn't really big enough for me to model. So I'm just wearing the regular Rebecca. And this is, and so, you know, strings hanging off that's okay but this is the newest version and let me get crystal over here i'll have to move over a little bit and she's modeling what i've done with this and i i need 10 inches here to make the sweater 10, one inch longer than this one i said i was going to do that so i'm doing that with this sweater i'm making it 10 inches from the underarm right over here to the rib and then i'm going to add you know a couple of or three rows of rib to the bottom so that should make it a little bit longer than this one i'll stand up and show you this this y'all have probably seen this but this is how long the rebecca sweater is it has been blocked it blocked out beautifully everything is uh, very drapey look at that it just turned out so nice there's the back of the sweater uh it looks just like the front basically so uh, it turned out so nice and it's so comfortable. I actually wear it when I don't need to be wearing it. I wear it around the house because it's so soft, it's, especially since I blocked it. It's just turned out so nicely. So I plan to block this one as well. This is a, uh, let me tell you what's in this one. This is 48% merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, and 32% organic pima cotton and they're both these both of these are dk weight and i made both of these with a size seven hook and if you're interested in making one you can go out to my etsy shop and purchase the rebecca sweater if you're in the community you will have an email in your inbox and you will have a special offer code now if you're not in the community go ahead and join up because the next pattern that comes out you'll get a uh, an offer code as well for a substantial discount on your pattern and any pattern in my shop. Several of y'all since Saturday have ordered five, six, seven, eight, nine patterns. <laughs> I'm so excited to see that because they're all over the uh, all over the place. All I see my clothes back here, all of my prototypes. Well, there we are, the prototypes. Um, I have probably 85 patterns out there now, I think, and y'all are buying 
patterns from two years ago, which is thrilling for me because I don't even mention them, but they are good patterns. They're all written the same way. They're all written in plain English. There are very few abbreviations, and the ones that I use are ones that you always see. There's no guessing on what I want you to do to make the sweater fit you and make it look good. So I think that's the key. I really... Uh, wish that I had some patterns like this when I was growing up. All of the patterns that I read were very, very cryptic. The word is cryptic, and that means hard to understand, um, very little information about what you should do. And these I have, um, actually, I put fill in the blanks here so that when you start making your sweater, you don't forget what you've used, how much yarn you bought, what hook size you use. That's very important. Uh, what hook size you use, how large you were when you made it the first time, and when you go back to make this next year, then you will know how how big to make it, <laughs> if you're the same size or not. I also put di a diagram in this one to help you understand the circular yoke and where we're measuring there to um, decide how wide the yoke should be. Now, let me show you this because I hope I was clear in the pattern, but if not, here's the way I measure from the neck to the underarm and right there is the underarm and my measurement it was on this one was eight inches you see where i'm measuring there just at a, an angle to the underarm where the underarm starts where your armpit is what do you whatever you want to call it this is an eight inch distance for me also around the sleeve is an eight inch distance from one end of the sleeve to the half of the sleeve. So, so like from the shoulder down to the armpit is eight inches on me because I have a 16 inch arm. It's basically a 16 inch yarn arm. And uh, that gives me some ease as well. It's probably not quite 16 inches, but I usually use eight inches as a half measurement for the arm. And when I go to uh, measure the yoke to where I wanna stop and break for the body, that is the measurement that I use. And you know what I found on here? I found a stitch marker. <laughs> I found a stitch marker. Ah, that's been in here for weeks. Oh, well. I had one yesterday that I took out on this side, and I thought, wow, I can't believe I left that in there. And now I've found another one just on my video. You were here. Okay, so that's the Rebecca sweater, and I wanted you to see it in two versions. I'll be finished with this one probably in the next week or two. All I have to do is the body and then the rib at the bottom, and then the a, a few, maybe few more rows on the sleeve. I might make it a little bit uh, of a longer sleeve than this one, although this is very comfortable. I really like it. It's oh so comfortable for summer, very comfortable. I wore it to the movies last weekend, and it was very warm um, here. It kept me warm because, you know, when you go to the movies, they have the air conditioner on so powerfully. I can't sit there for very long I mean, the backs of my arms was co were cold because this sweater doesn't come down very far and I thought next time I make this <laughs> I'm gonna make the sleeves longer so I might do that just for this one I just to is an experiment I'm also making it an, an inch longer as well because this crop length is okay but I think I want a little bit more length just to make it easier to wear that's that's what this one's made out of Vita Lana and I'm working hard on it I'll probably have some of this left over. I know at least two people asked me if they could buy that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So I might have to wait on that decision. So just bear with me. But um, there were also the five skeins of another yarn. It was a very, very small yarn called Old Barn by Nick Crate. And I bought it and I wasn't really thinking when I bought it. But I'll probably make something with that next spring. So I'm not really ready to give that up yet. Although y'all were very sweet to ask me to buy it. I was really glad that you asked me if you could buy it. But I'm not really uh, ready to, to give that up just yet. So I'm going to hold on to it for a little while. I do have quite a bit of yarn to give away today in my giveaway section. So um, let's move on to my diamond painting. I'll show you the video right now of the diamond painting progress I've made so far this week. Here's the progress that I've made on my last diamond painting. This is the portrait of Dr. Gachet and it's a Van Gogh. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh painted this. Um, I love, love these beautiful colors in this. I'm going to get down here where you can see it. I have finished this, and this is a 16 and a half by 
20 and a half. So it's not huge. It's not the biggest painting that I've done, but I do love the way the colors are blended over here on the side. Very beautiful in the background as well. That was a lot of confetti back there, which means there are a lot of colors in that. All mixed in, all different colors. And uh, I just love the background on this. It's so Van Gogh. He was a very swirly painter and he painted um, lots of uh, paintings in a swirling manner like Starry Night. If you look at that one, that is a very swirly painting. And this is the same way. He painted this right before he died, matter of probably weeks before he died. And this is a, this is a painting of his doctor that was helping him at the time. And apparently the doctor was listening to him and he painted the doctor in that position. Um, you can even see um, along the side here, along his face. Let me get up here where you can see it. Um, he's painted in some lines that show the, the, the folding of the skin as he pushed on it with his fist there. As he you know, was leaning on the side of his face and his eyes a little bit smaller here than it is there. Uh, but if you step back, it looks it looks very realistic and very um, uh, just it just looks realistic to me. But I love the way he painted it with the beautiful colors. And this is not his most famous painting, but I do love it and I do have a place for it. And as soon as I have it sealed and framed, I will show you where I placed it. This, of course, is my other finished project that I showed last week. This is the Two Sisters on the Terrace. And one of my very favorites because of the faces. Someone asked me to get a close-up of the face. So here I am. I'm going to get a close-up right there of this. This is not drill. There are no drills there. So um, the faces and the hands are not drilled or not painted with drills or resin. So uh, if you back up too, I just really love the background in this. I've noticed there are two people in a boat right above her head there and then back in the very far left corner are some houses let me see if I can get up here yeah right there there's some houses over here and then the um, the people on the boat are right above her head there little details that when you get back from it you can really see all the little details that he put in this. This is a this is a Renoir. Not it's not a Van Gogh. This is a Renoir. Very very nice painting. So that's the progress I've made. I've finished this one and that one, and of course Saint Francis of Assisi. And I'm going to seal them all this week and get them to the framers. And I'll let you know what I do with those after I pick them up. So that's a little progress I've made on my on my diamond painting this week. Now let me show you one other thing. I have started my Starry Night Santa, which is a you know, really pretty painting of the, looks like the Jerusalem Star up here. Let me get up here where you can see that. There it is, the Jerusalem Star. He's looking at, Santa's looking up at it with one of his reindeer. And he has a sack of toys on his shoulder. There's a church and a Christmas tree in the background. And I have started this, and I'll tell you why I'm bringing this up, because this is a square uh, drill painting. It's not round drills like the other two that I just showed you. This is a square drill painting. I'm going to get down here. See, you can see those squares right there. All these are squares, and you have to get them on there exactly right. See this four squares right here I haven't filled in yet? And they have to fit the squares. So each square has to be placed fairly perfectly on there. Now, every now and then, they'll be a little bit crooked, like maybe these two right here might not be exactly right. I don't know. Those are pretty good. But some of them are in there, like this one right here. This is a little bit crooked. So what I'll do is when I put the ones next to it, when I place the drills, it will snap into place. And I've noticed that on some of these other rows that the drills will snap into place. But this is a challenge. This is like a step up from round drills. This is a little more uh, advanced diamond painting and it's a great challenge for me. And I'm doing this because I have a special project that I'm going to do. And I've ordered the drills for it and I've ordered the canvas. It's a separate, it's not a kit. It's um, where you have to order the drills um, specifically for the, the canvas. So. I'm uh, going to talk about that maybe next week and hopefully I'll have my drills by then or at least I'll 
uh, be close to having those but I wanted to do this painting first because it's square drills and the other painting that I'm doing is not available in round drills so I'm having to do it in square I've never done a square drill painting so I'm doing this one to get my kind of my, my feet planted <laughs> in the square drill realm so that I can do those easily and uh, I just wanted to do one painting like that so I've started this one and I've done you know here I'm starting this part right here and I've done maybe half of it I've done this over here and over here I've done that so I have about another couple of nights to go and then I'll move the plastic sheet up a little bit more and I'll do the reindeer, reindeer legs and Santa's legs some of the background there it's not a very large painting this is a of course a diamond art club and it is 16 and a half by 22 so it's just a shade bigger than the portrait of Dr. Gaucher. So there you go. I will, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on the progress that I make um, on this particular diamond painting and on my new project that's supposed to be coming in pretty soon. Now on to what I've been up to besides my diamond painting and my pattern release on Saturday. Um, I have received a receipt for the money that we sent in, the donation that we sent in to Samaritan's Purse from the purchase of all those patterns that you bought, the People's Pullover. I so appreciate that. I've seen some actually on Facebook uh, done in different colors and they're very beautiful. And the one that I made in blue and yellow, my husband, uh, Mr. On the Hook, he really likes that one. And uh, I wear it every now and then and he likes it even though it's the Ukrainian colors he doesn't care. He really likes the way it looks. <laughs> So I wear it every now and then. But this is the receipt that I received. I also received a really nice letter about um, their appreciation for us sending in a donation for the Ukrainian people. And this is the receipt that I received from the Samaritan's Purse. See, there it is right there. And this is the amount that we sent in right there. $1,365. And they uh, called it the Ukraine response, and so that's that's what I sent. So um, I'm just really thrilled that y'all came through and bought all those patterns. I so appreciate it, so appreciate it, and I hope the Ukrainian people appreciate it too. I know Samaritan's Purse folks uh, were very appreciative in their letter that they sent me, and also that nice receipt that I can show you that I actually sent the money in. Everything was on the up and up, and nobody questioned me about that. I am uh, grateful that you didn't because I'm so sincere about helping people. I do want to help others who are uh, less fortunate than us. So that's what I received from the Samaritan's Purse. What am I up to this week? Well, last week I kept my little three grandsons. They're cute as they can be, a three, a six, and an eight. They're all boys, and they're just as cute as they can be. They, they all love to talk and they love to ask questions and Gigi's always right there they're in my craft room here they're in my studio and they come in here and want to play the piano they want to do the diamond painting so I let them put drills on the diamond painting thing and after they're gone I take them off it's no big deal but they really get excited when they put a drill onto my diamond painting and they just are into everything but they're not destructive or anything they're very very sweet and they want to see what Gigi's up to so what I'm up to now is I of course I have the three-year-old uh, he's still a baby he hangs around with his older brothers and he's right in there with them but he's still a baby He's still, but he still takes a nap, so he's so sweet. And I saw this pattern on Premier's website. It's a free pattern, and it's called the Esther Bunny. Now look at this Esther Bunny. Is that the cutest thing you ever saw? It's really, really soft. And what they were doing was they were promoting a, uh, they were promoting their yarn. And this is called Snow Cone Light chenille snow cone light chenille here's the let me get the label over here it's 188 yards on the ball all polyester of course it's 200 grams so it's a big ball it and this bunny supposedly takes three of these to do <laughs> never made a bunny before i've never made a bunny before and i've started this three separate times with three different hook sizes and the first one they said now this is a size six okay that's a big that's a big yarn super bulky they said to use a size i 
hook. Then I chain, I, I, I made the whole first four or five rows, like this is what it looks like. I know I have to pull that a little bit tighter there, but this is what it looks like. It's like a little cone. This is, this is the body that we're making, so I really don't even know where I am. I'm not into amigurumi. I don't do at all. I don't do any of that stuff. So I'm, But I really wanted to make my little guy a bunny so he could take it to bed and kind of use it for a, for a lovey, but it's a little bit more substantial than a lovey. So I made this, and I have a... Let me get it over here. This camera is still uh, challenging me. Here we go. There we go. That's what it looks like, and it's a cone that you start here and you do the rounds like, you know, pretty much anything. It doesn't lay flat. I don't think it's supposed to, but it's, it's like a cone. And they said that the diameter across from one side to the other is four inches. Well, I had to go all the way up to an L hook, and that's a big, that's a big hook right there. That is a size let me find the size on here that's an eight millimeter hook that's a big hook so i finally worked my way up i did this four different times this is my fourth time basically doing this and this was done with an l hook so i did an i a j a k and an l hook i tried them all and and honestly i've ripped this out so it really it rips out very easily i i never thought i could do that but it ripped out four different times. Well, actually three different times. This is the fourth time. And I may rip it out again because I don't know where I am on this. If you can see this, this is not easy to crochet. This is very difficult to crochet. You have to really just feel your way across. You can't see the holes even with a light behind it. I have a light behind this and there's no, you can't see the holes in it. You have to feel the holes and you have to put two single crochets in one hole and then one in the next one. And so the, the going is very, very slow. I'm not sure if I'm even going to use this yarn. Um, I need a super bulky and I could probably get one from Lion Brand that's easier to see than this one. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. I really, really want to make this because the chenille yarn is so soft. This is just like blanket yarn, you know what that feels like. It's so soft, but I've frogged this out so many times, I'm almost tired of it at this point. But if I proceed on, maybe I can finish it. I don't know, I'll have to let y'all know how this goes. But I spent way too much time on this. Yesterday I was going to, or I guess it was Saturday, I was going to um, make the whole body and then get the head going and show you how much progress I'd made. And this is as far as I, have gone and this is the fourth attempt <laughs> so if y'all make amigurumi maybe you can give me some advice but i have no idea what to do except to increase the hook size and the bunny may end up being you know as big as a big bear or something i don't know <laughs> i don't want him to be too big because he'll have to drag it around by the foot anyway uh, that's what I've been up to. Honestly, they were here all week, so I didn't get a lot done. I did finish my diamond painting with uh, Dr. Gachet. I wanted to finish that. And I knew I could do that in two or three nights. So while they were here, I spent about an hour each night after they went to bed. And I worked on the diamond painting and got that finished. So uh, I have made some progress this week. And I've also worked on my lookbook. And I announced this a while back. But I'm making a lookbook, and it's going to have several patterns in it. I have uh, probably nine possibilities on my whiteboard of that's why I'm looking over there. I have I have them lined up. What what I'm going to um, I'm, what I'm going to publish in the lookbook, and it's going to be all fall colors. It's going to be very pretty. I've already started two or three or four of the pieces, and I've gotten far enough to where I know it's going to be beautiful. So I uh, have worked on that, and I have a couple more that I want to try. Um, just quick things that I want to throw in the lookbook, and um, I may even dive back and use one of my older patterns in there. I don't know, and it'd be an option if you wanted to to purchase an older pattern too along with the lookbook but I'm going to try to sell it as a bulk pattern um, several patterns in one price uh, package and make it a little bit easier for everyone to afford the um, the whole fall wardrobe but it's going to be beautiful I'm um, just excited about it I'm just excited about it because it's something I've been wanting to do for an entire year and I just never 
I embraced it. I was going to do it for spring, and then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I have so many summer sweaters, I really didn't want to do that. But this is not just sweaters. This is something else. It's other things, too. So uh, I hope you're looking forward to that. And that's what I'm working on. And, and other than this silly bunny here, um, I've been working on my fall lookbook. So that's where I am. And I'm not going to show those to you until the, I may even wait till I'm all finished. I don't know. But I'm really excited about what I've started so far. I do want to tell you that I am going to do an interview on someone's YouTube channel. It's Linda Simpson, and she's doing a series of interviews of YouTubers, crocheters, and maybe knitters, I don't know, but uh, crocheters who knit, maybe that's what it is. And I'm, I'm really not in that category yet. I, I try to knit, but I've not worked on it for a while. Uh, but anyway, she asked me to do an interview with her, so I'm going to be doing that on August 17th. But I'll let you know when it gets a little closer to time. But I will put a link to her YouTube channel down in the description box. And I hope that you'll tune in and watch it. August 17th, um, the Linda Simpson's YouTube channel. And I think you just type in Linda Simpson in your search bar and you can find it. Or I'll probably just be able to put a link down here for you. Um, to her YouTube channel so you can watch it. So I hope that all my subscribers will jump on and watch it. And you can also watch it in a replay if you're busy on that night or if you're uh, working or whatever, you can uh, watch the replay. Be sure to put a comment down in the comment area and also uh, give it a like because she's um, trying to expand her channel. I totally get that. I've been doing that for a couple of years. And she graciously asked me to uh, interview with her and I hope I have some good answers for her, but I hope you'll join in on August 17th to Linda Simpson and watch me um, not, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> what she's going to ask me, but it'll be a, a kind of a fun thing to do. So be sure you tune in. Now, as you know, I've been working on a dotty sweater. This is the Dorothy sweater in a different colorway called Prairie. And of course, the yarn is the dotty yarn from Premier. And it's the color shifting dot print yarn, but whatever. It, it looks like that on knitted fabric, but crocheted fabric, it looks like this. It is beautiful. I really, really love it. It's soft and it's lightweight. And I'm not sponsored by Premier at all in any possible way. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do like their yarns. I'm not real sure about this one. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one yet. That's still uh, up for grabs. But I have uh, chained out for the sleeves. So this goes right about there. And I've chained out for the sleeves right there. So as you can see, that's not very clear, but that's, that's where I am right now. And then I have to crochet up to the shoulder on this side of the front. And then I'll do the other side just like it, and I'll be all done with that. I'll sew it up, and you know what? I'll, I may not put any edging on it. I might put some ribbing on that. I probably will because I've got the neckline a little bit low, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted to have breathable room up here. So I have the neckline a little bit low on it. And then I'm going to add some ribbing to it. It will bring it right up to about there. And then I may put some ribbing on the bottom of the sleeves. I don't know what I'm going to do with it just yet. But it's the Dorothy sweater. And it's made with dotty yarn from Premier in the prairie colorway and that is the garden party is the Dorothy sweater that I made um, a, a few weeks ago and released the pattern. It's quite beautiful. I've seen some people say I can't wait to get to this. I've already ordered the yarn. <laughs> so I'm glad. I'm glad you're using the Dotty yarn because it does turn out very beautifully with that yarn. It's lightweight and soft. I just really love working with it too. And when you finish the sweater isn't very very heavy. Sometimes in crochet, if you uh, crochet a sweater, it's a little bit heavy because it uses more yarn than a knitted sweater. I do know that. I have read about it. I do understand that. And that's one reason I wanted to learn to knit, so that I could knit some wearables that weren't quite as heavy as the crochet. But if you adjust your yarn, it's not so bad. And, you know, upsize your hook a little bit, and you can add a little bit of drape to your wearables. I have, so. I have several giveaways for today. I'm giving away this mandala cake yarn. This is by Lion Brand. It's a beautiful colorway. Look at that. I really like it, but it wasn't what I needed for what I was making. I was starting a, uh, a project and it came out white at the beginning and I really just didn't want that. So, and I'm not going to send this. I'll just frog it out for you because you won't know what it is and I don't have it written down or anything. So I'll frog that out. It's not a frog and finish really. I might've said that last week, but it's not. 
but this is the mandala baby yarn and the key word there was baby so if you use that in your comment you'll be in the running for that also best was the keyword for this is the best value mary maxim this is the spring ombre colorway oh man it is so pretty i really love it i love that spring ombre and i love more the neutral ombre but they don't have that right now and i checked it just yesterday and they were out so um, you might keep your eye on it i don't know if they're going to order any more of it or not but i really love the the neutral ombre but this is just as pretty and i have a skein of this left after i made a lucy cardigan from it and so i'm uh, giving this away today so whoever had that word in their comment will be in the running for that also i had a crochet surprise that i opened last week on my channel so pretty this is the monthly subscription for crochet surprise and they do sponsor this part of my giveaway and this is what it looks like here it's called the isla crochet tank there it is right there it's very cute. Let's get that up there as far as I can. Make sure you can see the detail. It's very pretty. And it comes with three cakes of comfy cotton. Three cakes. I'm trying to get this out of here. <laughs> three cakes of comfy cotton. Look at that. So you get a lot of comfy cotton in here. Also, you get some of that wonderful jasmine pearl tea. And it's called Clementine Sunset this, this month. This is good. It doesn't matter what flavor it is. It's really good. Any, anytime you make a cup of tea with their tea, it's really, really good. So that is what was in the crochet surprise this month. And I'm giving this away to a lucky winner who, who would use the word tank in their comments. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these three gifts this week. Here we are at the computer. There is the internet address for the video from last Monday. The keyword was baby, and we are going to, we answered that question. <laughs> they always ask me a mathematical question. It's not difficult, but anyway, I wanted to get the YouTube comments that we had. There were 183. Let's scroll over here and find out who wins the Mandala cake from Lion Brand. That would be Kenyatta Creates. Kenyatta Creates, you have... Let's see, there's the word baby in her comment. So you've won the mandala cake from Lion Brand. All right. And actually, they don't sponsor this. I bought that myself. All right. So let's change this word here. We're going to change it to best, B-E-S-T. And this person will win the best value yarn from Mary Maxim. Well, let's answer their question, which is 5 plus 3 is 8. So let's go down here and get the comments. And that would be 179 comments. So let's scroll down and find out who wins the Mary Maxim, the Mary Maxim Best Value Yarn in the Spring Ombre. That's Sally Horner. Sally Horner, you have won the Best Value Yarn from Mary Maxim. And... There is the word best right there. <laughs> it took me a second to find it. Okay, let's scroll over here and let's find out who wins the crochet surprise. And the keyword there was tank, T-A-N-K. Let's go over here and answer the question, which is the number nine. And let's scroll down just a little bit and get the number of comments. This is this crochet surprise list of people who use that comment 290 okay we all really like the crochet surprise all right so let's find out who wins the tank top with all that comfy cotton from crochet surprise this month and that would be candace bartley candace bartley you have one and let's see if we have yeah there's comfy cotton yarn let's see tank right there the word tank was in her comment so candace congratulations to you and everyone else who won today Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you for participating, and I hope that if you haven't won, you'll win soon, and um, there are lots of opportunities on this channel to win a giveaway. 
there usually two or three or four a week so be sure that you uh, watch and sign up use the keyword and that way you'll be in the running for one of these gifts i hope to be sending you one soon all right so next week next monday i will be picking three more winners and these winners will be receiving yarn and the yarn one of these is the landscapes fusion yarn if you've seen this before this is by lion brand the color is flushing meadows it's a 109 yards on the ball, a size four yarn, 100% acrylic. It's a roving yarn. Hold it up there where you can see it. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I started a sweater with this and I decided to cancel that. I'm not going to do it. So I thought, you know, why don't I just give this away? There's six skeins of this. So you'll have 654 yards of this and that way you can make something with it. I think you could probably make a sweater with it. I just, um, it's not in my plan right now. And so I want to give this to a um, lucky subscriber who might want to have it to make something from. So there are six skeins of that for the Landscapes Fusion yarn. And the keyword for this is fusion. And it's right there, F-U-S-I-O-N, F-U-S-I-O-N, fusion. And that will be the keyword for this yarn. So be sure to put that in your comment. You can put all three words for all three gifts, or you can put one word for one gift or however you want to do it. So that would be fusion for the landscape fusion yarn, six skeins of that. I also have five skeins of this. This is drifter yarn by King Cole. It's a chunky size, beautiful, beautiful colorway. It's really beautiful. I like it. Let's see if there's a name on here. There might be a name for the colorway. Uh, the colorway is called Naples, like the city in um, Italy. Naples, Italy, I believe that's what it is. <laughs> the colorway is Naples, N-A-P-L-E-S, Naples. And this is uh, five skeins of this. Let me see how many yards are on this. This seems like a pretty substantial ball of yarn. It's actually 25% cotton, 6% wool, and 69% premium acrylic and it is very very soft I like it I have five balls of this I don't need them there are 170 yards on the ball 100 grams so there are five balls of this drifter chunky and the keyword is king k-i-n-g the keyword is king so if you want to sign up for this next Monday then use the word king in your comment and you'll be in the running for that now the third giveaway I have next week is the premier basics multi this is the Americana colorway. I already have a blouse in this color. I was thinking about that while I was making one. <laughs> I had it about this much done on the, on the um, I guess it was the back I was making. And it looked just like the one that I have. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to spend time on this. I'm going to give this to someone who wants to make a red, white, and blue sweater or a purse or a cardigan or something else, a cover up or whatever you want to use. But this is the Americana colorway. It looks much like my America tank when it's cr uh, crocheted up. It's not too stripy. It's more blotchy and it is pretty. I like it. The color changes every three inches. So you can see that blue from there to there and then red from there to there. So it's really um, a quick change. They are fairly abrupt, but because they're so short, it's not stripy. So I have three balls of this. This is a size four weight. Again, Americana. I think it's all polyester, uh, machine wash, warm, tumble dry. Yes, 100% acrylic, 245 yards on the skein. 245 yards on the skein. So that's a lot. And you'll have three skeins of that. So whoever signs up for this will win the Premier Basics Multi. And the keyword here is basics. And you have to spell it like this. B-A-S-I-X. Let me turn it this way and get it over here. B-A-S-I-X. Can you remember that? B-A-S. <laughs> going the wrong way with my finger. B-A-S-I-X. Basics. And use that for the keyword for this yarn. This is, again, the Maricana yarn by Premier. I like it. It's, it's about like, uh, it reminds me of Red Heart Super Saver. It's just like Red Heart Super Saver. It feels like it. It crochets up like it. It didn't hurt my fingers or anything, but 
again, I already have a blouse like this. I don't need another one. So I'm going to give this away next Monday. So be sure you sign up for those three gifts and you will be in the running for one or all of those, whichever ones you choose. Before you click away, please like this video. I should have said that earlier because uh, I know sometimes people will go and make dinner or clean up their room or whatever they're doing and they'll come back and forget to like the video. So please remember to like this video before you click away. And I appreciate each and every one of you who watch my videos. Um, it's very rewarding to see the comments and the very sweet comments that y'all make about what I'm doing on my show. You do like the diamond painting, so I'm good with that. For the most part, everybody loves it. I've not ever had anybody say they didn't like it. And so I'm going to continue showing that because it is another craft that I'm working on every single day. So I thought that might be appropriate to show on my video. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. It's Monday, so uh, you have a whole week to do some crafting. So be sure you do something beautiful for yourself or for someone else this week. I hope you enjoyed your time here with me and I certainly enjoyed coming to you and bringing you uh, a little bit about my crafty life here at uh, On The Hook Crochet. So until next Monday when you can join me then to find out what's on the hook. <laughs>